In class, we talked briefly about this sequence, n minus 5 over n squared, where n goes from 1 to infinity. We wanted to know if this sequence is monotonic and if it's bounded. If we compute the first few terms, the sequence appears to be steadily increasing. But in this case, appearances are deceiving. And a better way to decide whether it's monotonic is to use calculus to decide if the associated function f of x equals x minus 5 over x squared is, is increasing for x values bigger than 1. So let me take the derivative using the quotient rule and simplify. I get that f prime of x is equal to minus x squared plus 10x over x to the fourth. And now I need to decide is f prime of x greater than 0 for x bigger than 1. If so, my function, and therefore my sequence, will be, will be increasing. To check if f prime of x is greater than 0, I'll first set f prime of x equal to 0. So I'll set my ratio here equal to 0, which means my numerator needs to be equal to 0. And if I factor that, I get that x equals 0 or x equals 10. Now if I draw my number line, since f prime is equal to 0 at 0 and 10, it'll be positive and negative in between these values. And by plugging in values like x equals negative 1, 1, and 11, I can see that f prime is negative for x less than 0, positive for x between 0 and 10, and negative for x bigger than 10. In particular, f increases when x increases from 1 to 10, and then it decreases. And so the same thing is happening to our sequence. Therefore, the sequence is not monotonic. We can also use calculus to check if the sequence is bounded. Our first derivative test shows that our function f of x has a maximum at x equals 10. At least, that's the maximum for x values ranging from 1 to infinity, and that's all that's relevant for our sequence. Therefore, our sequence is bounded above by its value at 10, which is 10 minus 5 over 10 squared, or 1 20th. Now notice that our sequence n minus 5 over n squared is always bigger than 0 for n bigger than 5, since the numerator and denominator are both positive in this situation. And since there are only finitely many terms where n is less than 5, we can just use the minimum of these terms and 0 as a lower bound. The smallest of the first four terms is negative 4, which is less than 0, so that negative 4 forms a lower bound. So this sequence is, in fact, bounded. And somewhat surprisingly, the calculus ideas of derivative and maximum and minimum come in handy.